Class 5A group play is here. And today we are bringing you a little bit of, uh, of some look ahead predictions. Uh, uh, 5A uses the RPI system really heavily compared to the others. Um, so today here at IA Football, we had our ranker draw up what he thinks uh, the playoff format kind of looks like right now. Um, again, it's really early. Group play starts this week for Class 5A. A little bit of a different setup than 3A and 4A as, as we're posting as, as well today. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. And first, we're going to break down the playoff format in Class 5A. 16 teams qualify. Teams will play in their group starting this week, but they don't play each other. Uh, and they don't all play each other, if that makes sense. So you have your group, but you don't play everybody in your group. Uh, it's a little bit of a different setup. Uh, and the, the final product is all the same. The final 16 will be based on the RPI. Again, the RPI is, is like the algorithm that, that the state uses to determine, you know, who's the best team statistically. And, and with this algorithm is how the playoff format is set up. So again, 16 teams make it, and it's set up like a normal bracket. The number one will face the 16, two will face 15. I mean, it's like a little, think about it as like the little March Madness bracket, but it's like just one chunk of it. You got 16 teams uh, in the top, they're playing the bottom and so on. So you got the 8-9 matchup, the 7-10 uh, and so on and so forth. But it's all RPI based. RPI is so huge in Class 5A. And those those RPI rankings will start to come out, I believe, next week. I haven't seen any yet. Um, I know our ranker kind of does a prediction RPI based, and that's what we're using today. He uses BC Moore, a uh, really good ranker. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. And we're going to start from the top. The RPI number one team that we predict is Southeast Polk. And number one and two can really be flipped because. Southeast Polk and Dowling square off week eight. Uh, really, it's looking like the winner of the Southeast Polk Dowling game will be the one seed heading into the heading into the playoffs, and the loser will be the two again. Uh, Southeast Polk, you got Sioux City East, you got Des Moines Lincoln still on your schedule. You got Johnston, which which could be a game. You never know. Johnston obviously is a team that's going to show up and compete every day. But uh, the way our ranker sees it. Is uh, that 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 class that that week eight clash between Southeast Polk and Dowling is really going to decide the the number one team in the RPI going forward. Um, so let's move on to number two, where we see Dowling. Like I said, uh, the number two seed that they would face off with the number fifteen. We only got nine for you today because uh, it's still kind of early, still kind of tough to decide. But looking at Dowling, a little bit of a tougher schedule. They got Roosevelt this Thursday. You still got Ankeny Centennial, which Southeast Polk already got by. So a little bit of a tougher schedule. You got Urbandale, and you got Sioux City North, and obviously you got Southeast Polk. So again, Dowling, our number two team projected in the RPI right now. Uh, you know, if the season were to end, that's kind of what we're looking at. Dowling as the two seed. Obviously, they've got good wins over Kennedy Valley, Ankeny, and Waukee Northwest to this point. Uh, moving on to number three, where I think I think the tier kind of drops off. You have you have Southeast Polk, you have Dowling, and then you got a little bit of a tier. I, I think some most people would say a little bit of a drop off uh, there uh, uh, across teams. I think Dowling, Southeast Polk are the two obvious uh, contenders right now. But I tell you what, this team can t- can contend too, and it's Bettendorf. Uh, really interesting team. I think it's somebody, some a team that not many were really expecting to be at this point, but. Bettendorf is looking like a team that could go nine and zero. Uh, this prediction model that that our ranker uses has them going eight and one and losing into Kennedy, which would make them the three seed. If but if they go undefeated, it could be a two seed. They could they could jump the loser of that Southeast Pole Dowling game. Again, um, Bettendorf just a, a team that I think our rankers and and people across the state really didn't see coming. But I tell you what. They got a good win over Pleasant Valley, a 20-point win that's looking even better now with what Pleasant Valley is doing. Linmar is a team that's competing, and again, uh, Bettendorf, they got some tough games. Like I said, Kennedy, they got on the homecoming, uh, Kennedy's homecoming game at Kingston Stadium. Uh, you got at you got to go to Prairie, and you got to host City High. Again, you got Davenport Central and Dubuque Hempstead as well in there. So uh, Bettendorf, still a road, uh, a, a ways to go, but I tell you what, it's a team that's interesting. Charlie Zimmerman, uh, you know, he's, they're not airing it out a ton. They're a really balanced team, kind of using both both uh, facets in their offense. They got 500 yards passing, 880 yards rushing, so they can beat you in both ways. And uh, I tell you what, it, it's a team that that's going to go out and compete. And 
Uh, it's a team that is sitting where our ranker sees it as the number three best team, not only in our poll, but in the RPI to end the year. And again, if they can go 9-0 and and run the table, it's a team that could be a two seed, uh, which which would be something that not a lot of people predicted. Um, but nevertheless, again, Bettendorf, kind of how we see it, uh, predicting them to be the three right now. Moving on, projected number four seed is Pleasant Valley, another team that could really win out. They have a favorable schedule, and an 8-1 and one is, is kind of their likely finish. Again, they already have that one loss to Bettendorf. Cedar Falls is the one game that, that you kind of see as I kind of pull up their schedule. Um, you got Cedar Falls, you got Muscatine and Ty Kozad, you got West, and you got Linmar again. Um, West and Linmar are, are, are two tough teams to end the schedule, but Cedar Falls is really that game you're going to kind of circle, uh, again, as as a as analysts and journalists that we do at IA Football. It's kind of the game that we look at. Uh, obviously, they got to take every game seriously, but when we look at it, we look for those big games, and Cedar Falls is that one game that you really see uh, remaining on their schedule. But, again, the one blemish at this point, they lost to Benton North, but since then all they've done is just win and, and win uh, pretty impressively. Uh, again, that Cedar Rapids Kennedy game, they, they won 36 to 35. That's going to be a huge game going forward in the RPI. They beat Liberty. Uh, they've already beaten Prairie. That was a single digit uh, oh, victory, too. So they're winning close against teams that are kind of neck and neck with them in the RPI. And those two wins, Kennedy and Prairie, are going to bode well for them down the stretch. So, again, uh, with that being said, that's our RPI number four team that we kind of see. Moving on. RPI number five, a team that Pleasant Valley beat, uh, is Cedar Rapids Kennedy. And and after two losses to start the year, Kennedy has dominated their last two games. Um, again, as I pull up their schedule, Kennedy, they, they, they beat Linmar 34 to nothing in a huge game. And then against their rival, CR Wash, they won 45 to seven. They've got City High this week uh, for City High's homecoming. I think I'd call that a trap game. That's going to be a really good game. City High towards the bottom of our <clears throat> of our rankings right now in Class 5A. But nevertheless, they are ranked, and they are winners of two in a row, and so is Kennedy. So two teams that are on a win streak of two games uh, clashing right there at Bates Field. Um, should be a ton of fun. But nevertheless, Kennedy, uh, they have Bettendorf and Cedar Falls left to challenge them. Uh, look for them to go 7-2 and two, uh, is what our Class 5A ranker kind of has them projected at again. Seven and two for them. Um, again, they got the two losses right now, but uh, he kind of thinks that they're gonna run the table and and win it out and and be sitting at this RPI number five spot at the end of the year. Next up at RPI number six, Prairie. Um, Prairie's two and two right now and has a tough schedule remaining. So this number could really flip. They got Liberty, Ankeny, Bettendorf, and Iowa City less. Iowa City West, and as our ranker puts it, he likes them to finish six and three with their lone loss coming to Bettendorf. If they finish six and three, the six seed is a possibility. A loss to Ankeny or someone else, and they probably slide down to that 11 12 spot, and then you're going on the road. So Prairie has a huge slate of games left, and they've already played some really, really good competition. They have that win over Cedar Falls uh, week one, which is going to prove to be big. Lost to Southeast Polk, lost to Pleasant Valley, uh, beat Dubuque Senior. So again, Two and two for Prairie, but our ranker likes them winning out besides Bettendorf and, and getting that six seed and securing home field for at least one game. Moving on to RPI number seven, Waukee. Waukee just coming off a nice win over Valley. Uh, as our ranker puts it, let's see what he said. They start the year solid three and one. They play Johnson this week, and then their only remaining test is Dowling. He says, I like them to finish seven and two and somewhere in this six to eight seed range. Again, this is uh, the, the number seven seed that we have right now. But Waukee, again, like he said, yeah, a, a nice win over Valley. They have a nice win over Ames. Their one loss being to their rival Northwest, which could end up hurting them in the RPI a little bit. But he's right. I mean, they got Johnson, they got Dowling. But besides that, it's Lincoln, Roosevelt, and, and Council Bluffs Lincoln. So a really favorable schedule for Waukee. And, and if they can they can do what they what they have to do what they're expected to do the rest of the way you could see this Waukee Warriors team hosting a playoff game uh in round one again we see them at RPI number seven right now if we were to predict it um that's why we kind of want to do this every week because you know teams are going to lose and, and whatnot so I think so, this think this would be a fun kind of series to pick up on if you guys kind of enjoy it so be sure to like this uh give a comment uh maybe if there's a team you see going on a run but 
Uh, if you guys enjoy this type of playoff prediction type of vibe, whether you agree or disagree, leave a like uh, and share this so that we know to do it more because it's really going to kind of depend on that. But nevertheless, get, let's get to our final two schools. Uh, and our eight seed is the Ankeny Hawks. Uh, they have one of the toughest schedules remaining, though. Uh, they got Iowa City West, CR Prairie, Iowa City Liberty, and Valley. On paper, uh, they should be favored in probably all those games except Prairie. Uh, our ranker says he likes them to finish the year three and two and end up five and four. And in this scenario, they end up as the nine seed, um, be, or they end up as the eight seed because they will jump Centennial in the head to head again. They have that head to head over the rival Centennial, which is going to might, which might prove to be big. But again, our ranker uh, sees them I mean, ending up around the five and four, six and three scenario, and at this number eight seed. And it's a that's a big seed because again, the eight seed will host, and the nine seed will go on the road. So. Uh, that 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 middle area in this in this class five a RPI rankings is, is going to prove to be to prove to be really really uh, really big in terms of whether you're hosting or going on the road. So again, Ankeny um, pulling up their schedule. They have a nice one over Centennial to start the year. They lost the two best teams, Southeast Polk Dowling, but then they just bounced back last week and beat uh, Johnson sixteen to ten. So that's going to prove to be a nice win as well. Again, they've got West Prairie Liberty. Valley and Washington. So a good chunk of Eastern Iowa schools for the Ankeny Hawks uh, left on their schedule. And as you can assume at the nine seed that we see right now in the RPI is Ankeny Centennial. Uh, Centennial was two and two to start the year, but is playing very, very good football right now. They have Dowling and Waukee Northwest remaining on the schedule. Look for them to finish around that six and three mark. However, they have been one of the teams in the past that has beaten Dowling in the regular season a few times. And if they were to do that and finish seven and two, look for Centennial to jump into the five or six seed. Uh, our, our ranker kind of sees that as their kind of end goal if they were to beat Dowling. But again, if they lose and finish six and three and end up knotted with Ankeny or whatnot, that head to head factor is going to come into play. So Centennial, they've got a huge slate left. Um, again, they've got Dowling. Uh, they've got Waukee Northwest. Uh, they have Urbandale, Des Moines East, and Des Moines Roosevelt. But again, Dowling, a team um, that fell on their first game to Ankeny. And if, if they don't blow that 17 nothing lead and lose that game to their rival Ankeny Hawks, we're, we're sitting, we're looking at a team that's three and one with a with a one loss to a three points to the number one team in the state of Iowa. If that's the case, it, it shifts a lot, which just shows how every game in the state of Iowa in Class 5A is just. Crucial. So again, they, they they did suffer that loss. They are two and two, but still plenty of plenty of room or plenty of ground to gain, I should say, for the Jaguars and Trenton Smith and company. They're a ton of fun to watch, uh, and and they got some big games coming up. But nevertheless, uh, those are the nine nine rankings that we have. Again, a new a new kind of setup, a new idea that that we brought to the table here at IF Football. Um, be sure to leave a comment and like this if you enjoy this type of. Uh, class 5a prediction type of thing we love looking forward to the playoffs because that is the fun time we still got like a month or so until that point but again uh, if you like this type of stuff be sure to like and comment and let us know what you guys are thinking but that's our top nine rpi projections for this week heading into group play for class 5a again my name is cadenis and i was just delivering those rankings for you guys hope you enjoyed them uh and and maybe this will become serious for us who knows but nevertheless we'll catch you guys later